Good morning. I'm trying a new tool, a little phone holder thing. Um, getting fancy. Um, you all probably can't tell the difference. Okay. Day 169. What? Um, chapter 24 of Jeremiah. I read a bunch this morning. Almost 10 chapters. Uh, I think it was eight, actually. Yeah. And I am going to camp on the very last one. And interestingly enough, I thought, oh, this will be easy. I was a little distracted while I was reading this morning. And my mind was going all over the place. I was having, a, I was having trouble really focusing. So it took until my prayer and meditation time where my brain finally kind of settled down. And I'm human. Sometimes I'm like, ah, this is this one will be easy. Like yesterday was kind of straightforward, the loincloth. And I was like, ah, yeah. I, even if my monkey brain can't settle down, uh, I'll be able to say something. Like it's, and and finally, my mind kind of calmed down. Spirit was able to talk to spirit. Like, Oh, well, that's not what I expected. <laughs> I thought I had it figured out. And um, God showed me something that I think is a little unusual. So let's just see how this goes. All right. So chapter 24 is about the figs. Fi a, back a basket of figs. Some good, some bad. This is an analogy that... Um, God gave, oh, there we are trying to reconnect. And the good figs represent the folks, um, that listen to God, go to Babylon into exile, and he's going to protect them. Those are the options. He's, they're going through all of this, like in these cha 10 chapters in a nutshell, in a fig shell, I don't know. he said, you know, there's this. Like, I am done with you people. I'm going to destroy you. I've got to start and wipe the slate clean here with Jerusalem. And those of you that want to be saved, you need to go to Babylon. Which is weird. Like, to be saved, you've got to surrender, go over here, leave the land. And those that decide to stay and not voluntarily enter into exile are represented by the rotten figs or the bad figs. So I thought, well, hmm. And then they even say, well, the good figs is that God's, you know, heart, recognize, their hearts recognize God's heart. I will be able to do something with them. I will be able to plant them, replant them in soil. They will grow for generations. Meanwhile, those represented by the bad figs or the rotten figs, nothing good is coming their way. Um, disease, famine, death, you know, just all the bad things. And they were hanging in there. Okay, with a little bit of a connection problem there for a minute, a second. And okay, so on with the story. So that's very strange, right? So as I was really thinking about it, well, good fruit, bad fruit, okay, I, yeah, we kind of get the analogy. It's a lot, a lot of places in the Bible. But then putting it in the context of exile and voluntary exile and good fruit has good possibilities. You can do something with it. It can be nourishing, replanted, rotten fruit, rotten and so anyway thinking about all these things and the words point of no return come to my mind which is interesting because that's sort of what we think of exile meaning like you don't get to come back you got to go over here and you don't get to come back and per usual god's ways are not our ways he's actually using something that seems like from the human perspective to be a point of no return to say, this is where I need you to go so I can take care of you. I've got a plan. 
Yes, it seems like there might not be a return for you to your land, but I've got a plan. So if your heart trusts my heart, you're gonna enter voluntarily into what seems like a point of no return. And then the folks that hang on going, nope, I'm not leaving. I'm, this is my home, you can't make me leave. I am not voluntarily entering into exile. And that does not make sense to me. That's a point of no return. I don't want that. They're the ones that actually enter into a permanent exile where God is concerned. He says, oh yeah, well, that just shows you your heart and it's your way or the highway. You're not trusting me and trusting the bigger plan. You're relying on your own human desires, understanding all of the things. And so you're actually going to bring about the thing that you're trying to hold on to, the point of no return. I thought, wow, isn't that interesting? Um, that even within the context of these juxtapositions of good fruit, productive fruit, rotten fruit, exile, and pairing the good fruit with the exile. And, you know, the rotten fruit with the, the staying in the land. Um, very interesting. So then what do we do with this as readers thousands of years later? Because um, these stories, I don't, while they may be literal, they're also metaphorical. I mean, even God and has his prophets use metaphor and analogy and so it needs to be practical it is practical hi bunny um and i think it shows us that when we feel like we're backed into a corner when we're being exiled from our human perspective that if we can settle ourselves down and learn to let go, accept the exile, or what seems like an exile, go to a new land, or a different land, and that we will be taken care of. Let God be God. We get so worried about how, it doesn't make sense, I don't understand this, that we actually bring about our own destruction. Have you ever been there? Or your own failure, like whatever it is, um, where you have clung so tightly to something like, no, 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 I'm not letting go. You're not, whether it's a, a relationship, a situation, work, like any area of life, spiritually, maybe you've been in a spiritual battle and you've staked your claim on the ground and you are only relying on your human understanding and you hear God saying, hey, I need you to go over here. And you're like, no, no, no. Are you being a rotten fig? <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm, I know there have been times when I've been a rotten fig. So that's what I love about God and with these analogies and these stories is that, um, you know, usually there is a point of return, but at some point there's not. And through our own vices, stubbornness, pride, you know, all the things that are talked about in the book of Proverbs, we can literally cause our own destruction. And, and we can even take down other people with us because they are, whether we wanna be influential and teachers and coaches and leaders or not, we are just by being in proximity with other humans they're watching so whether it's your kids people around you you're role modeling um, and if they are not wise and tuned into God's heart guess what they're tuned into their humanness and what you're doing and we all make it normal and we can all get rotten together like rot uh, our energies rottenness, quote unquote, goodness, um, healthiness, they're all contagious. They all spread. 
Um, but one rotten fruit in a basket can really spread a lot of rot and do a lot of damage quickly if the healthy fruit is not surrounded and doesn't have enough strength and health on its own if it's even got one weakness in there hiding that can be activated by the rottenness. So we've got to be really careful about how we really live, how we think, the things we let into our mind, um, the things we watch. Right now, you know, I've taken a news break um, for a few years because, sorry, there's a mosquito biting me. Ouch! That's going to hurt later. Um, sorry. <laughs> for those of you who are listening, you're like, what is happening over there? Uh, I'm out walking in nature and nature got me. Um, so I could, we could go on and on with these analogies, but you've got to really be careful about what you're letting in and not letting out. If you're not letting your heart and your spirit really be in touch with the big spirit, with God and his heart, then you are going to be much more vulnerable to disease, human thinking, limited human thinking. Um, and you're going to be like the walking, the walking dead. I was there for a long time. I just now I'm kind of like rubbing my eyes and like waking up and like, oh, oh, okay. I kind of, so but not everybody has that reaction. You may feel very awake, very large and in charge and in control, my way or the highway. And sometimes it's those folks, because they're so strong in themselves, they really block out um, God's heart in that whisper. Because it, it is that, you've gotta really be intentional and tuned in. We've talked a lot about that before. So, the point of no return and the uh, God's ways upside down from our ways. Sometimes he really does ask us into what seems like a place of no return, into an exile. We've got to let go and trust. And otherwise, we really will be in a place of no return if we stand firm in our humanness, in our own limited understanding of it just making needing to make sense and logic. So sometimes you got to let go and surrender and go into exile for a time to be protected, connected, nurtured for a hope in a future to be replanted and re-nourished. And so your heart can stay connected. I know. I didn't write it. I'm just, I'm just reading and learning along with you and learning how to give my very real human self enough time and space and making sure I keep enough time and space in my day-to-day -day life now to go, what's going on here? What's really going on? And give my spirit time that it needs to go check in and say, help me out here. Because my humanness is like wanting to drive a stake in the ground, do this, this is what makes sense to me. But if you're asking me to submit and do something that really doesn't, that feels like an exile right now, like a, te you know, and it's gonna be temporary and you're gonna, this is actually your hedge of protection over me, please let me know. <laughs> And then listen and do it just like these folks role modeled for us in the Bible and this very interesting story about good figs and rotten figs. Um, and we're all in the same basket together. That was the other thing. Like it's hard to tell sometimes. And you just need to, that's why we really individually need to be checking in and then hopefully as a, as a little fig on your own, that you're trying to be with other good figs that understand that God's ways are mysterious um, and that you're not surrounded only by 
limited human thinking that can easily convince you because we are easily convinced. You're like, oh, right, that makes sense. That then actually, and then everybody's going down together into true point of no return. All right. I think we've circled this wagon enough today. I think you all have gone on a quite a little walk with me today. I appreciate it. Um, it's given me a lot to think about because I've even got a situation right now going on where my human self is really wanting to stake a claim. So I think it was the message, of course, that I needed personally today. So because the Bible is so personal and so living and active and powerful, if you've got something going on in your life, open your Bible. Do, you know, maybe go to this story. Um, Jeremiah chapter 24, the figs. And, or go to another one. Like, let God lead you. you let spirit lead you. And really meditate on it. Ask him to speak to you through some of these seemingly strange little stories in the Bible. Um, and I know that you'll get some insight that you need from the one who's really in control and um, quiet all the other noise and voices that are going on in your world. All right, my friends, rise and shine. Where is the sun? Oh, there. Yep, it's going to be a hot one again here today, but that's okay. All glory. Ooh, the moon is up there too. I don't know if you can see it. Yep, here we go. Beautiful palm trees. All right, I'm gonna enjoy this for a few more days. So you're still with me. I think we're gonna finish the book of Jeremiah here in Florida. And then, um, yep, but every day we rise and shine. It's always a new day and a new hope and new mercies and new understanding. Bye.